Welcome to Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Sustaining growth, securing prosperity, a look at the 2013-2014 fiscal package. Exclusive post-budget interview with the Finance Minister on Caribbean Airlines and economic growth. And the people have their say on this year's national budget. Thank you for joining us to our top story. From fuel subsidies to changes in the structure of the nation's tax regime, this year's fiscal package delivered by Finance Minister Larry Howai seeks to bring about the skeletal changes needed in the nation's economic operations to see the momentum of growth picked up. In his outline, we take a look at how the government seeks to address this through the expenditure outlined for financial year 2013-2014. The 2013-2014 budget has been set at a $61.6 .6 billion figure. And in presenting the package, Finance Minister Larry Hawaii is describing the fiscal package as a continuance of government's streamlining expenditure. Coming off a surplus from the previous financial year, the ministry is said to be still on the path towards sustainable economic growth through a number of projects. This year, the budget focused on reform changes through amendments to its tax legislation as well as constitutional arrangements. In presenting his second budget in the lower house, Minister Hawaii began his presentation with outlining the need for the shift away from dependence on oil and gas sector to other business clusters outside of this arena. For years, while Trinidad and Tobago has enjoyed the benefits of fuel subsidies, the gradual removal of this subsidy has been a suggestion by the International Monetary Fund IMF to the government in recent times. In heeding the call, Minister Hawaii announced the removal of a percentage of this from flights at Caribbean Airlines to destinations outside Trinidad and Tobago. Despite this, Minister Hawaii announced that Trinidad and Tobago were in discussion with JetBlue, Apollo and West Jets Limited in getting flights to Trinidad and Tobago. We are collaborating with the major airlines as well as with airport and cargo operators with a view to expanding their opportunities for increasing direct travel and air cargo to Trinidad and Tobago. From July 2014, JetBlue, a low-cost American-based airline, will commence flights to Trinidad. And, and a new charter, Apollo Airlines, a Greece-based company, will soon la launch flights from selected cities in Europe to Tobago. These new airline arrangements will complement WestJet's current service between Toronto and Port of Spain, and Caribbean Airlines operations between Port of Spain and destinations in North America and Europe. While this fuel subsidy removal from airfare is just one way of maximizing revenues earned from the energy sector, the drive to ensuring more vehicles are CNG ready is another. Minister Howard outlined phase one of the gas to CNG conversion drive as having the ability to reduce dependency on this subsidy. Oversight of this will be spearheaded by a new company with the purpose of adding value through its placement on a local market. Phase 1 would involve an expenditure of $500 million over a two-year period, which will result in the construction of 22 new CNG stations and for the conversion of 17,500 vehicles. Phase 2 would involve an expenditure of $1.57 billion with the construction of the remaining stations and the continuing conversion of vehicles. It is the intention to list this new company eventually on the local stock exchange. However, a number of tax proposals laid out in the minister's budget also point to the redefining of the following, the Corporation Tax Act, the Motor Vehicle Accident Fund, the Income Tax Act to address leakages and provision of further energy incentives. The delay in processing VAT refunds has been impeding the growth of exports and private sector development in light of the fact that such delays could represent an increase in the cost of production. I propose to simplify the VAT refund process for the manufacturing sector. As an initial step, I shall increase the allocation for all VAT refunds with a view to ensuring that all VAT refunds are made, at minimum, within the legal time frame. To ensure that this is achieved, I propose to allocate $1 billion, $1 billion in the first month of the new fiscal year for clearing the bank. In order to encourage small and medium-sized enterprises to raise capital through the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, I propose with effect from October 1st, 2013, 
to amend Section 3, Part 15 of the Corporation Tax Act by redefining the qualifying capital base for these incentives by excluding retained earnings and reserves, and in terms of the new issued capital raise, the 30% to be owned by 25 unrelated shareholders, which will now become 30% of the new capital issue. The minister also outlined a motor vehicle accident fund created for victims of dangerous car accidents. I propose with effect from January 1st, 2014, to establish by legislation a motor vehicle accident fund using the funds from the 6% tax on insurance premium. The fund will be used to compensate victims sustaining bodily injuries from accidents involving vehicles driven by uninsured drivers. All these initiatives have been described by Minister Hawaii as also continuing stimulus plans while securing a reduction in the deficit despite tapping into moves to increase government revenues. Kim Durham Kalawan, News 4. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Vistas is assuring that no property tax will be introduced under her administration. Speaking to members of the media following the budget presentation, the Prime Minister says changes to the tax regime looks industrial taxes would focus on corporations such as Petrotrin. I want to make it very clear that my government will not introduce any property tax. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissessa making it clear that property tax will not be implemented under her watch. Addressing concerns following the 2014 budget presentation in the lower house, the Prime Minister says the provisions made in a fiscal package delivered speaks clearly to industrial lands occupied by businesses. What we are looking at from what Mr. Hawaii spoke about today is what is known as an industrial tax. In fact, I've given instructions for a bill to be drafted that will clearly take the lands and building taxes as it was prior to 2010 before the uh, the law that was passed by the PNM for the uh, property tax. So I want to ease any of those who may be fearful that there's going to be a property tax. There will be no property tax. We will have an industrial tax that is on Petrotrin, industrial um, concerns such as like Petrotrin, Point Lisas and so on, industrial. Um, with respect to residential and so on, we will take it back to the pre-2010 position before the law, the property tax law was passed by the PNM. So I want to make it very, very clear for those who sent me text and wanted to concern, I'm clarifying this position. There will be no property tax on residential and agricultural lands. We will go back to lands and building taxes as they were prior to the intervention by the previous administration with their property tax introduction. And presenting the package, Finance Minister Larry Hawaii says evaluation of these industrial lands will be carried out first. The backbone of a successful land and building tax is a proper valuation of properties within a transparent framework. This will require the property rules being brought up to date. I propose to phase in these taxes over the period 2014 to 2017, during which time the properties will be valued and consultations will be held with all stakeholders. In phase one, and effective immediately, we shall commence valuations of all industrial land, including plant and machinery, whether house or in-house, with a view to implement this tax by July 1st, 2014. In phase two, we will impose a tax on commercial properties, and in phase three, we will impose a tax on agricultural lands and on residential properties, with a deductible allowance to provide relief to certain agricultural landowners and low-income homeowners. Legal Affairs Minister Prakash Ramadar also sought to clarify any notions surrounding the land building tax, stating that government remains committed to steering clear of residential lands. We have decided um, that the residential version of property tax that the PNM has spoken to will have no place in our law. We shall return to the land and building taxes of the old. So if you paid $100 then, you will continue to pay that and no more. Kim Ram Kalawan, News 4. When we come back, an exclusive post-budget interview with the Finance Minister. Stay with us. This year's budget will promote economic growth and sustainable development, which is evidenced by the shrinking deficit. Minister Hawaii describes the highlights of the fiscal package and the experience of delivering his second budget. 
The focus of the 2014 fiscal package was on job creation and growth of the economy. This, according to the Honorable Minister of Finance and the Economy, Larry Hawaii, while speaking to News 4, mere minutes after he delivered the 2013-2014 budget presentation in the Parliament Chamber of the International Waterfront Complex on Monday. The Honorable Minister said that the public would note that the $61.3 billion budget was not an election budget. From a point of view of going forward, I think that the focus has to be not so much on what we give to individuals per se, as what we do to ensure that the economy is, uh, is on a sustainable path going forward into the future. So the key thing for me was to make sure that um, we put initiatives in place that would protect jobs, that would create more jobs, um, that would equip people to be able to fill those jobs, and therefore the critical issues for me were to make sure that we had enough of an allocation to, um, to education so that people could be properly retrained. Uh, as well as, to, when I say education, I mean Ministry of Education as well as Ministry of Tertiary Education and Skills Training to make sure that people had enough, um, they, 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 oh, sorry, that people are retrained and able to do the jobs that become available. Um, that's the first thing. And secondly, that we continue the momentum of investments that will continue to create jobs for people in the future. Minister Hawaii spoke of the preparation for and lead up to this year's budget presentation in comparison to that of last year. By and large, I was, you know, I understood the processes a lot better than um, last year. Coming into last year, I had no idea how things would work. Um, you know, I had no parliamentary experience, for example. So, even in terms of understanding how Parliament works and all the processes and so on. It's something that I had to try to get up to speed pretty quickly on. Um, but in terms of going forward, um, or, um, or in terms of this year, I think the key thing is because, you know, I think it was a lot easier for not only myself, but members of my staff, um, so that they, because they were able to, to, to bring things, um, to finalize things a lot earlier than we would have been able to, to have done last year. Um, as you can see, we've actually done the budget almost a month earlier this year than last year. And again, that's because of the familiarity that I personally had. My staff already had it, but it's also for me important for me to understand and to be comfortable with what we're going forward with. And um, yeah, I think we were able to get that done this year. This year's budget presentation was the second for Minister Hawaii, who was sworn in as Finance Minister on June 25, 2012. He projects a balanced budget by 2018 as the country continues to move on from its first budget deficit in fiscal 2009, with the smallest deficit being recorded this year. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Meanwhile, Minister Hawaii spoke of the measures that the government and the board of Caribbean Airlines Limited would take to ensure that ticket sales would not be affected by the government's discontinuation of the fuel subsidy for the airline. Caribbean Airlines must move towards the adoption of a financially sound business model for positioning the airline in targeted segments of the global tourism market. The new board of Caribbean Airlines Limited has completed the first phase of a revised business plan for the airline to achieve financial viability. To this end, effective October 1st, 2013, I propose to discontinue the fuel subsidy which the airline currently enjoys. The subsidy for the Tobago Airlift will remain. These factors have been incorporated into the business plan, which I shall receive on September 17th. I have been assured by the Board of Caribbean Airlines Limited that the removal of the fuel subsidy will not impact the ticket pricing policy. This announcement was made as the Honorable Minister of Finance and the Economy delivered the 2014 budget presentation on Monday. Speaking outside the Parliament chamber, Minister Hawaii spoke of the plans to ensure that a hike in ticket prices would not be a consequence of the government's move. We're going to have to put an initial capital injection in to recapitalize the company. Um, and then the company will have to, on their own, raise their own funding, borrow money and so on as required. Um, <clears throat> the, the thing is that um, they also would need to do some restructuring. Um, and reviewing some of their routes and, and, and um, some of the aircraft that they have. Uh, and I, all of that will go into an overall streamlining of the overall cost structure, uh, as well as providing them with the cash flows to make themselves competitive going forward. The Honorable Minister said that Cal would also have to better manage the overall expenses associated with the actual flights. 
He noted that additional details on the revised business plan would be presented to him soon. The official plan is coming to me on the 17th. Uh, when, when I get that, we'll be able to, to perhaps say a little bit more specifics on the exact turnaround and so on. But initially, it is not that uh, having pulled away the fuel subsidy, we, we recognize that we're going to have to make an initial capital injection into the company to put them back on a viable footing going forward. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. When we come back, the sports minister congratulates J. Hugh Gordon. Stay with us. With the presentation of the 2014 budget, it is clear that sport continues to be high on government's agenda. The heavy investment in athletes, programs and facilities has borne fruit, which is evident in our performances at the London 2012 Olympics and beyond. The latest international triumph is Jehu Gordon's gold medal at the World Athletic Championships. And on his return from Europe on Sunday, the nation thanked him and his coaches for their efforts. Wayne Cunningham has more and please be advised that there is some flash photography. For those of you who understand sport, let me first of all start with his coach being a coach myself who understands how difficult it is to win a gold medal, because I have not done it yet, will continue to try, politics will be gone, but I will die trying to win that gold medal. Stand Dr. Ian Hippolyte and give him a round of applause for bringing back gold to Trinidad and Tobago, right here locally, local brain, local training. As a coach himself, the Honorable Annan Roberts, Minister of Sport, appreciates the efforts of Dr. Ian Hippolyte. As coach of World Championship gold medalist J. Hugh Gordon at the Athletes' Welcome Reception on Sunday. The minister then broke down the race for those present. It was perfectly planned and perfectly executed, so much so that those who think they know did not know and they were looking elsewhere for gold. But from right here on the soil of Trinidad and Tobago, planned, strategized, perfection, fluid motion, no stutter steps. Imagine that you have to jump over some hurdles that high like this. You and I cannot even jump over that with a run up and a stutter step and a bent knee. And then you have to hold your form and race a world champion, Olympic champion, everybody around you. And you hold your form and remember what your mother said when you was young. Die for the tape. Lean, boy. Lean. And it was one of the perfect leans that you will ever see that brought joy to all of us. Great athletes thrive on challenging themselves and are not motivated solely by awards. A fact that the minister pointed out. That's what great athletes do. They do not focus on medals and money and house and free flights. Those are things that we do because we appreciate them. And for those of you who say that is too much for them, let me tell you, you do not understand of which, that of which you speak. The mere fact of J.U. Gordon running in a semi-final and a final with over 75 million people watching in the semi-final and over 180 million people watching Trinidad and Tobago for 47.69 seconds during the race, two minutes before the race, and five minutes after the race. If you were to pay for that, you would have to spend at least 15 million US for that advertising time alone. So to give him, when we reward our athletes, it's not a payment. It's just a recognition that we try to love and respect what you do when you wake up four o'clock in the morning and you go to bed nine o'clock and you forget party and you forget line and you take torture from Hippolyte balling in your ears when you're doing good and Skinner on the truck. That's why we do it. The gold medalist is now the number one ranked 400 meter hurdler in the world and God made it clear that he did not do it alone. I want to single out a few people tonight because a lot of people know about my coach, Dr. Ian Hippolyte, Mr. Skinner. I want to call out the medical team especially, Dr. Anil Gopi Singh. That's my personal doctor, my two massage therapists, Mr. Ian Sharp and Mr. Brent Elder. I'm not seeing Oba Galston and Seth Nicholas. I'm not seeing them here, but they are part of the TT Sport Medic who helps with my rehabilitation stuff, so I must say thanks to them also. <laughs> my psychologist, she's abroad right now in Philadelphia. She's a professor at, the, at Philadelphia University, Dr. Margaret Utley. Played a big role. 
Dr. Dinesh Anmol Singh. I'm not too sure if you all know about him, but I normally go by him to do a lot of chiropractic work. So I must say thanks to Dr. Anmol Singh also. <laughs> My really good friends from since high school and also from university at the West Indies, I, I just want you guys to stand up because you all have me here today and been supporting me 150%. Ayende, Darlene, Brittany, Pip, and McKinson. Mr. Errol Sims, who's also been taking care of me at the University of the West Indies. Our principal today, Mr. Sankat, thank you very much for accommodating me. The National Association President and the manager of our team, I must say thanks for putting together a really good World Championships this year. And to everyone else who's been there supporting me, thank you very much, everyone. We in Cunningham, News for Sports. Thank you very much, Jay Hugh. When we come back, the people have their say on the 2013-2014 budget. Stay with us. With the 2013-2014 budget having been read, News 4 took to the streets to ask what citizens of Trinidad and Tobago have to say about the fiscal package. This year's budget seems to not have garnered as much attention as last year's budget, with many citizens seemingly unaware of the measures taken in this year's fiscal presentation. I didn't listen to the budget, so I can't answer you. I didn't read it and I read the papers, so I read a lot. You can't say nothing. Comment right now, no? None? None of comment right now. However, those citizens who are aware of the package delivered many mixed views. Everything went well, man. Everything went well. Yeah, once they go up on the diesel and gas, we satisfy with that. It's nothing new. It's the same thing. So basically, we in the same thing right now. Nothing changed. You promised so much thing, and up to now we get nothing. Everything was good for me. For my life, I find everything was good. It's a lot of single parents doing the URP and, and CPEP. She could have put something on it for we still. So the rich had to get richer and the poor had to stay poor. That's all I had to say. The, the country still need much work to be done, to be honest with you. And it's not just a budget alone can help. You understand what I mean? There are plenty of poor people in the country need plenty of help from all over Trinidad right now. But the budget is a good thing because they're doing a lot of things for the schools, for the younger generation that are coming up right now, which is a good thing because the youths really need that. Others took a more practical approach to their view on the budget. Whatsoever, whatsoever they put in the budget, the people will never be satisfied. You give them plenty, they still want more. You give them more, they still want more. And whatsoever they do will never satisfy. But you have to make yourself satisfy, and that's the only way. And while some Trinbegonians may have spent their Monday afternoon following the budget in detail, while others remained oblivious to the presentation, according to this woman, one thing is certain for most citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, at the end of the day, we still have to work. Whoever they say in the budget, we still have to buy food, we still have to work. No one gave us anything to say, well, or we raise, the raise a drop or raise, we still have to work. We still have to come out and work, and we still have to buy the food. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.